we've got everything from CCTV. We can see uh, motorway cameras, which obviously not so relevant on the Yorkshire coast, but we can see some cameras on some of the A roads up and down the coast as well. And also, uh, one of the main tools that I use these days is speed data, which is provided by Inrix. It, it comes from vehicles. It's called floating vehicle data. When these vehicles move along all the different roads across the Yorkshire coast and throughout the UK and the world, in fact, they send data back to computer service via satellites, and that eventually calculates our roads moving based on how far these vehicles have gone and how long it's taken them. And how much do you rely on just ordinary punters in the streets spotting a queue, spotting some roadworks? Is that a bit old school? Does it still help? I think even even now, 10 years on from when I first started doing this, um, they are one of the most important sources because sometimes we might have trouble getting hold of a police force if they're very busy that day. They might have better things to do than talk to me. So, yeah, I mean, p- listeners are always very important and local businesses as well because there could be an accident right outside the local post office, for instance, and they're obviously going to be able to tell me more than maybe uh, the police are on the scene who are busy doing an important job at that time. And it is very much a team effort. So I guess there's a whole gang of colleagues behind you whose job is checking the information, working out what's going on. How big is the team behind you? There's a huge team who uh, get in touch with the police, Highways England, the local councils. Of course, we have to monitor all the events up and down the Yorkshire coast as well, see what's going on with them, because anything that affects traffic we're interested in, and also with the trains and planes and everything that moves, really. I don't think I'm giving away too many secrets here when I admit that you're not in the same building as us. As we speak right now, we cannot even see each other. So I'm going to get you to explain what's in front of you, what little world surrounds you? Are you have you got monitors everywhere you look? I like to imagine um, you have. Yeah, I, it's surprisingly simple, really. The people who do the editing of the travel news, they've got up to maybe four monitors in front of them, one with maybe with the cameras on, one with the speed data, another with a feed of police information, because uh, we're quite lucky that we've got good relationships with a lot of police forces where we can monitor their logs and see basic information coming in, uh, you know, when incidents happen. But uh, with me, I've just got the two monitors. Um, I usually have uh, one f- maybe four functional things like recording audio things like that and another one for the information that i read out on air and then i got i just got a big black box which allows me to connect with tom in the studio in the afternoon uh, just by pressing a few buttons and then i've got one big red button which allows me to put my microphone on and off and do you struggle to stop i imagine that you could easily have roadworks and temporary lights and traffic jams overtake your life so even at weekends <laughs> you can't help but spot roadworks and think i need to tell somebody about that i need to add that to the list well, I shouldn't admit this, but yeah, uh, I've been out on many occasions in the car with Claire in particular when we've been out on trips to see people and go to the car shows because I'm a car enthusiast. And every time I cross a roundabout or a junction or maybe a set of roadworks I've spoken out about on air and never seen before, I, I do get a little bit excited, yeah. And I think you've got a real challenge because we may come on the radio three times an hour and do the travel news. Does it become a real challenge? It does for radio presenters, for most people, but especially with travel news, to avoid not saying certain catchphrases and certain cliches over and over again. Do you have to really fight it? Oh, definitely, yes. I mean, we've all got our crutch phrases, as we call them, and it's the same in travel news as much as it is in the rest of broadcasting. We do have to be careful that we don't sound the same every single time. And I don't want to sound boring. I don't want to be there for 30 seconds just boring listeners with information that they don't need to know. So, yeah, we try and make it interesting.